Jimmy, 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 what are you, what are you doing? This is my shop. Get out of my chair. <laughs> Told you a million times. Come on. <clears throat> Sorry, everybody. Hello. In this video, we use a clip from Bill Nye to show you how buoyancy works. Buoyancy is a simple but important theory, and I hope everyone's favorite scientist can help you further understand its concept. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Imagine this. Whenever a boat's in the water, it pushes some water out of the way. We say it displaces some water. See? Displace, place away. You with me? So it's as though this model boat of science were making a hole in the water shaped like this. Now take a look. This is the aquarium of science. And it's filled right to the brim. As the boat settles in, it displaces some water. It runs over the rim, down the scutter, into this pitcher. Now, the model boat of science displaced this water. In fact, all boats displace water. In fact, everything you put in the water displaces some water. Here, watch. This is the water level of the dunk tank of science. Watch. Using the latest in dunk tank technology, I am going to displace some water. You ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I displaced some water, right? Just like the model boat of science. Now watch this. I'm going to place the boat on the scale, which right now is in balance. Uh, the boat takes it out of balance. Now I'm going to put the water that we displaced earlier on the other side. See? It just balances. Now, Watch this. Take the displaced water. Take the water. Put it back in the hole we had earlier. That's one. And here's the second. It fits exactly. Isn't that cool? Science. Now, the first guy to figure this out was a Greek guy named Archimedes. Archimedes uh, got in a bathtub, and it overflowed. And he realized suddenly at that moment that he could figure out how much volume things have, how much space things take up, if he knew how much water they displaced when they sink. Anyway, he was so excited by this, he said, Eureka! which is Greek for, I found it. And he jumped out of the tub and went running down the street with no clothes on. It was a big deal 2,000 years ago. Well, it still is a big deal. Archimedes had a brilliant mind, and the Archimedes principle was one of his many achievements. This principle stated the ability to find the volume of an irregular object through the displacement of water, which later became the math and theory behind discovering buoyancy. All right. Let's talk about Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle has been around for a really, really, really long time, and it was very important to rulers of, like, Greece and Egypt years and years and years ago. And we'll talk about why in just a minute. So what Archimedes said was that the buoyant force is on something is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Now, what does buoyant force mean? The buoyant force is the net force that is exerted on an object that's immersed in a fluid. All right, so we've got a force from the pressure on the bottom and a force from the pressure on the top. We add them together, we want the net force, and that's the buoyant force. And so what Archimedes said was that that buoyant force is the weight of how much fluid the object is displacing. So buoyant force equals weight of the displaced fluid. Well, what is that? Well, it's the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that's been displaced. So that's the volume of the object that's immersed in the fluid 
times acceleration due to gravity. All right, now we have two major situations in which we can use Archimedes' principle. If the object is completely submerged, so the entire object is immersed in the fluid, then the volume displaced equals the volume of the object. All right? Now, so that makes it really, really, really simple. All I need to know is what's the volume of the object, and I'm done. If the object is floating, on the other hand, then what that means is that it's not all the way immersed. What that means is that the volume displaced is actually less than the whole volume. Why is Archimedes' principle true? Well, we can look at a situation in which we've got an object immersed in a fluid like this. All right. Now, what are the forces acting on this object? We're going to draw a free body diagram because we're good physicists. So we've got weight, and then we've got two forces that are acting from the fluid. The fluid has a pressure in it. So there's a pressure at the bottom and a pressure at the top. Now, pressure is force per unit area, and it points in any direction. So the pressure at the bottom, the force that's acting on the object is pushing up because that's what direction, I mean, if it's going to push on the object, well, what, it's got to push up, right? So the upward force is pressure at the bottom times the area because force is pressure times area. Same way, pressure at the top is pushing down. So the downward force is pressure at the top times the area. Now, the buoyant force is the net force exerted on the object by the fluid. So that means that it's equal to pressure at the bottom times the area minus pressure at the top times the area. So the area I can take out because it's the same at the top and the bottom. So that means that it's the change in pressure times the area. Now, we know that as you descend into a fluid, the pressure increases. How much does it increase? Well, the change in pressure is given by the density of the fluid times acceleration due to gravity times how far you went down. Now here, we went down a distance h. So look what we got here. H times A. That's the volume displaced. So that means that the buoyant force is equal to density of the fluid times acceleration due to gravity times the amount of volume that was displaced. So Archimedes' principle. Now to solve the horse problem. We have a rectangular barge measuring 300 centimeters by 200 centimeters sitting in a freshwater lake. A horse jumps onto the barge, causing the barge to sink 12 centimeters. How much does the horse weigh? The barge, before the horse is loaded, is sitting at this level. It has displaced water equal to its own weight. When the horse jumps aboard, the barge sinks another 12 centimeters. The volume of water displaced by the weight of the horse is a rectangular prism. 300 centimeters by 200 centimeters by 12 centimeters. The volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. That's 300 centimeters times 200 centimeters times 12 centimeters. This equals 720,000 cubic centimeters. This is the volume of the displaced water. Now we need to calculate its weight. Fresh water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. This means that 720,000 cubic centimeters of water weighs 720,000 grams. Let's change this to kilograms. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. This means the displaced water weighs 720 kilograms. The horse weighs 720 kilograms, the weight of the water it displaced. Buoyancy isn't the most difficult topic covered in environmental physics, but it is certainly the most abundant source of basic environmental physics that we can all understand and appreciate, and we hope this video helps further explain what buoyancy is all about.